Hey everyone, uh, here's another video update for Treasure Reef and I've made quite a few changes to the aquascape in this aquarium which is going to be one of the topics of today's video. I'll also talk a little bit about the methodology and um, kind of my vision for this uh, aquarium and things that I have done that I wish I would do a little bit different and at the end there's going to be um, a big mention of the new tank uh, that I am setting up. So stay tuned. Uh, this is going to be pretty, pretty awesome. So let's first start with uh, what's going on with this tank. Uh, if you look a few videos back, you'll see that it's actually uh, looking a little bit different than what it used to look like even just uh, a few weeks ago. Um, you'll see that there's a lot more opening space on the right. There's uh, actually a lot more space even on the left. So the biggest, and I've uh, actually trimmed the green slimer in the middle, uh, so it used to be probably a lot thicker and wider. Um, and even then I'm trimming a little bit more. So the tank is now at three year mark and my problem is there's just not even enough space to put any new coral, but the tank itself is just at the point where the corals are growing onto each other and it's just messy. It's very hard to do any upkeep of the tank and that is the problem. So um, I think my vision for the next um, few weeks at least, I, I, I wish it'd be less than that, but really this is a uh, few weeks, is gonna be to just trim the heck out of this um, uh, tank. So um, you'll see, and I'll, I'll, I'll show you a few examples here. So first of all, the decision of putting the green slimer in the middle, uh, that was kind of the right decision because um, then you don't really see the center overflow. So I think I like that. But what I don't like about it is that I think I've placed it a little bit too uh, forward. So instead I should have uh, pushed it back uh, quite, a, quite a lot, I think. So the, the root should have been kind of a lot closer to the overflow. And maybe that is uh, something that I might do over the next couple of weeks. But right now I'm just kind of trimming it so that it doesn't shade any of the other coral. I've got some nice colonies to the right and to the left of it. This is the pink um, Cadillac and I've got the uh, rainbow loom in the back there. And also this whole um, rock structure is overrun by Sunset Monty on the left and there are some really nice uh, mushrooms in the back but clearly there's just too many so the thing that i have done with this tank is i've made it very modular so any one of those rocks uh, there's actually five pillars or six pillars and i can remove each and every one of them or at least that was the idea in the beginning now um, i don't think i can quite do that because of a uh, there's just the coral growth is massive but B, um, I tried doing it on this tank on the right uh, yesterday, and there's, there were actually two problems with that. One is the amount of uh, silt and uh, all that nutrient stuff underneath was just crazy. So like just lifting this um, um, structure had made the whole tank very cloudy. So that is one problem. And the other problem is um, everything is now stinging. So, I've got, uh, I don't think you can quite see it, but I've got some uh, stuff on my right arm, on my left arm, uh, just I'm being stung by everything. I think yesterday I was stung by, uh, I think it was the anemones, but I also have a feeling that it's the green slimer that has been stinging me. So my vision for the tank is to actually make it um, very easy to work with. So I have to trim mercilessly. And another thing that I was really surprised is uh, how many corals I have in the back that I completely forgot about them. So, I mean, there's this guy, the Fabia, that is not doing very well. So um, I've yanked it outside and I think it's, it's gonna do a little bit better here. And look at this uh, guy over here. Like that is an amazing um, Fabia, I think, or, or Chalice, no, I think it's a five year. And it is, oh, come on, stop photobombing. Uh, anyways, uh, 
this is where all the fish uh, uh, are gathering uh, because they are always hungry. So we'll talk about them in a second. But um, yeah, so like, look at this, uh, Pavia. Come on, man, just move. Um, so uh, it's it's a beautiful uh, coral that I just had in the middle there. Uh, I put it probably a year and a half ago and I completely forgot about it. I haven't seen it. So I think I'm gonna be taking it out and moving it you know, right and, uh, front, right and center. And I've made a few other changes. So I've moved a few corals around. I think the, um, uh, these guys, the um, cloth polyps are gonna do a little bit better in the back here. They don't really like the strong flow and are probably gonna try and do something about this flow as well to maybe not blast them as much. And I've also kind of freed up a little bit more space here. Uh, I'm really gonna bring things up front. And quick detour, take a look at this orange passion, that little nub there. Uh, it is literally um, at least two and a half or three years. I think I've placed it when I just started this tank and that thing was just pale and not doing very well. And whatever I started doing in the last uh, six months or so, it has actually colored up incredibly. Like this thing right now is exhibiting just the right type of coloration. I'll try to do a few nice photos <laughs> later on, but right now um, it's, it's still not quite growing, but I think uh, at least it started to encrust, so, which is pretty awesome. And yet again, uh, you make the mistake of placing this, uh, I think it's Mundata or whatnot, um, coral and it's suffocating my uh, forest fire digi. So I'm gonna have to do something about that. And the list just goes on and on and on. So if you remember um, in my previous, previous tank, the um, Pragmatic Reef, um, I used to have every coral pegged on little pegs and that was very convenient. This was probably my most uh, easy to look after uh, aquarium. So, but that's really where we are right now. Now, let's quickly take a look at a few more changes. So uh, I've been working a lot on this uh, pillar over here. Um, it's doing a little bit better. I've trimmed on the right, I trimmed on the left, and I still have to do a little bit more work on this, but it's definitely a lot more manageable. The clowns seem to kind of have hooked up so they are at least in the anemone, but one is the new one is very adventurous and he's gonna go in the left corner all the time uh, to get food, but the other one won't steer away from the, uh, uh, the anemone ever. So there is that. The uh, leopard wrasse is doing very well. So uh, whatever he's finding, finding, or maybe a little bit of supplemental food, like the tiger paws that I'm uh, feeding, it seemed to be doing just the right thing. So there is that. I did find a really good place for the uh, torch coral. So when this torch coral was in the middle here, there was just too much flow and it was not happy. So right now kind of pushing them and maybe not giving him as much light seemed to be actually doing uh, quite well, but probably it's not the light, is the flow. So there's lots of open space here and I'm trying I think I'm now at the point where I actually want to see a little bit more open space. So right now it's still a little bit ugly. There's a, a lot of algae, but a lot of it has to do with the fact that I just couldn't get with my magnet uh, to any space right next to uh, the glass, between the glass and coral. So again, maintenance uh, is hindered and that is the problem. Now, my goal is to trim this section then kind of start moving uh, to the left and then eventually you know trimming everything on the left and then taking this big rock out maybe cleaning it uh, doing whatever i have actually no idea what, what i'm going to do with it but kind of reshuffling things around i think i want a little bit more of the open feel because it's just been crazy uh, everything has been growing and hopefully that will lower my uh, alkalinity consumption because you can see things are just um, moving very nice. So the 
I think I've mentioned that in the last video, but look at this. Um, so the Versa is dead on, spot on. So usually with my Camor dozer, which I do like, I would have a bit of a discrepancy, even if I calibrate the uh, two units, um, my alkalinity or calcium would just move in different, uh, at a different rate. But right now here, not, not really the case. So I do like Versa from that perspective a lot. And then finally, this is what's happening in this section. It's still very messy. Um, I do have some other crazy algae now growing over here. So part of me actually thinks that I'm gonna just give up on the refugium. I, I don't know, it's just, it's not doing very well for me. And maybe I'll just kind of load up this whole section with more live rock and just make it a cryptic zone. Not sure if this is a smart idea or not. Please let me know in the comments. I'm very curious about that. Uh, I always keep tweaking with the, with the tank. And then finally, let's talk about uh, my, my new project. So um, stay tuned. Um, I'm gonna actually show the tank in the next video. It, it's not quite in, this, in the um, uh, kind of form that I want to just show it uh, yet. I'm doing some tweaking to the aquascape and whatnot, but this is gonna be um, a crazy new setup. Uh, some of you do remember my freshwater aquarium, the Green Forest, and this is the tank that I've taken, and I've actually come, uh, I've, I've converted it into a saltwater aquarium with a canister filter. And this is gonna be like a sunlit, uh, or, you know, freshwater, light lit um, aquarium that's gonna be lots of movement, lots of anemones, lots of softies, basically almost no controller, none of that uh, stuff, so. We'll see how that goes. Maybe it'll be another disaster or or not. And speaking of disasters and failures, uh, there's quite a few on this channel. So once again, um, you know, what you see here, it's one example, but I've had many experiments where things just didn't work out. And even here, um, you know, things may look pretty decent on camera, but I'm, I know there's a few colors that like to tweak. I have a few, issues still going on in the tank. And uh, if I could start from scratch, I'd be doing things completely different on some of it. Like I'd, I'd be focusing a lot more on uh, just kind of placing corals a lot further apart. But again, I wanted to geek out and actually have them grow on each other. Look at this, like this is just really awesome warfare. And there's definitely a lot more um, kind of reef building so to speak. Speaking of reef building, uh, major shout out to uh, Jake Adams and uh, Reef Therapy. Um, uh, so these guys, uh, I love the, um, the podcast. The only issue is um, I don't think it comes out frequently enough because um, if I'm doing any fragging on a Sunday afternoon, like today, you know, turning on a, a two hour podcast of uh, you know, a couple of great guys just talking about aquarium related stuff and, and maybe some uh, morsels of wisdom. I find that very, um, very just, well, therapeutic. So um, it's just, it's, it's a pleasant uh, experience. So if you haven't been uh, listening to it, uh, please uh, give it a, sh uh, a try. I, I think that's, a, that's an awesome way to uh, spend your aquarium uh, maintenance time or whatnot. So that's where the tank is right now. Um, stay tuned for the next uh, big reveal uh, where we're gonna go over my other tank. And um, please let me know in the comments below if there's anything else you are interested in. And also uh, apparently you're supposed to uh, ask to uh, like and subscribe. So, well, do what you wanna do. So thanks for watching and see you next time.